Shrewd Manager Christianity's Position Two traits of the shroud image are so unusual, perhaps unique, they argue strongly that it's not handmade. Modern scientific shroud studies began with this photograph from 1898, when photographer Secundo Pia developed the image from his glass plate. It showed that the shroud image behaves like a photographic negative, with amazing detail that's hidden from the unaided eye. This photo negativity has been confirmed many times, including in this photo from 1931. It's safe to say most artwork doesn't have this property, but some attempts to reproduce the image do. See here, here, and here. The detail from the shroud is much more precise and realistic, obviously likely due to the artistic limits of the copyists. But does any artifact have such a faint, negative image that displays this level of detail? The dozens of copies we saw in video 2.3 don't. To investigate, researchers Jackson, Jumper, and Urkoline hired certified forensic artists to create drawings that would behave like the shroud image. Despite being coached on their objective, the artists consistently fell short. Could the artists have gotten better with practice and trial and error? Probably. But how would medieval artists know whether their trial ended in error or success without taking a picture and looking at the negative or using some other modern tool? Jackson's team used a tool called a VP8 image analyzer to confirm the failed attempts. In 1972, engineer Peter Schumacher built, installed, and trained operators on the VP8 an analog computer that makes a brightness map where brighter is rendered as higher elevation, darker as lower, and grays in between. During one training session in 1976, a photo of the shroud was input. As you see, the shroud image looks three-dimensional. Here is the output from other pictures. The differences are obvious. After 25 more years of experience, Schumacher still claimed that the shroud image produces a three-dimensional response unlike any other image so processed. Does Schumacher overstate the evidence? Influential blogger Dan Porter, a shroud skeptic who retains a dash of hope the shroud might be real, says that Dr. Colin Berry solved the 3D challenge with a scorch, seen here from Berry's blog. Impressive. Further, newer software like ImageJ that Berry used shows that many other photos appear to have 3D information too. See, for example, this four-part study from Porter's blog. We could also point to the work of Bernardo Galmarini, an expert with vast experience of 2D to 3D conversions of photographs. Clearly, no one can make a career out of converting 2D pictures to 3D if it only works on the shroud. So maybe the shroud's 3D traits are not all that rare. Let's consider this. Did Barry really solve the 3D challenge? Did he confirm that washing removed all traces of the technique? Is his scorch as superficial as the shroud image? Does scorching blood change its character? Does his image fluoresce or glow in UV light like the shroud image or like the shroud scorch? How does his scorch look in the VP8 with Schumacher's settings? Do the other objects that fail the VP8 test pass Barry's software renderings? If Barry answered all these questions, it's unfortunate he didn't mention it or link to his test results in these same posts. In Shroud3D.com, 3D conversion expert Galmarini wades into the debate, stating, no matter how the image was formed, the perfect correlation between the gray values and the position of the body in the z-axis exists, and that is a fact. This information is unique to this photographic image. There is no other photograph about real-world subjects that has this 3D information. Since Pia's photos, many have noticed that intensity varies with distance to the cloth. That is, the image areas where a figure would be closest to the cloth are most intense, and those furthest away are faintest. This is what accounts for the 3D look in the VP8. Jackson's team quantified this observation, discovering a single global mapping function meaning the relationship is not arbitrary, but follows a single mathematical relationship over multiple points on the body. Textile expert John Tyre reports on tests using a linen replica. 
The replica's draping properties indicate that the VP8 analysis corresponds to reality and cannot be dismissed from a trick of the computer or its programming. Researcher Aldo Goreski cleverly confirmed the presence of 3D information. He stacked two images, one negative and one positive, but offset them slightly. As you can see on the young woman, this technique produces what Goreski calls mere oddities easily obtainable using computers, but shows very different results on the shroud image due to the intrinsic nature of the subject. So in the last several videos, we've seen many attempts to reproduce the shroud image all fail to satisfy even a small set of key traits, such as superficiality, blood first, image second, and the lack of pigment, primers, and binders. Each failure to handcraft the image increases our confidence the shroud image is not handcrafted. The VP8 is very much like Pia's photography. Each simply processes in a repeatable, testable way whatever data is input. And while we can quibble whether the shroud's three-dimensionality and photonegativity are unique or merely highly unusual, we now have two more tests that replicas must pass. 1890s-era photography and 1970s-era brightness maps. Any method that fails these tests was not the method used to create the original image. Next, foreign matter found on the shroud. 